Greetings and welcome to TikTok Live here at Bloom From Within Love. I go by Bloomy. Hope y'all are having a wonderful Tuesday. Thank you all, those of you who are joining in. And today is, um, I don't know what to really call it yet. It's something that I was inspired and guided to do um, regarding the subconscious and how it affects connections. So I'm not quite sure just yet if it's going to turn out to be a full blown reading because I'm just I'm rolling with the guidance and seeing how it's going to unfold. OK. Um, but I was guided to have like this mini explanation about the importance of understanding how the subconscious affects relationships. And um, yeah, when we talk about past life connections, karmic connections, any connection, um, first and foremost, I just want to say that just to give a little mini background about me maybe this will help so you know I <laughs> welcome everybody that's coming in I may not see your comments so please you know don't take offense I typically don't um, engage that much just depends on what I'm doing but it's not meant to be offensive towards you I'm usually just way deep into channeling or the message um, but I do try to stop sometimes you guys and try to glance up and see if I can see something and try to respond okay um, but thank you all that are coming in. I appreciate you and all of y'all that come in with that positive high vibe energy. I certainly appreciate you all. And um, may it be amplified to you where you need it the most. Okay. And um, as my typical standard disclaimer on every live almost is um, those of you who are here for the higher vibrational benevolent reasons, just please excuse any kind of toxic energies or comments or offensive nature that may come into the chat. Okay, um, it is a global scale. So I just invite you to take on the same mindset and attitude as I have, which is just to not feed any of that stuff, any kind of energy. Okay. Um, Everybody are, are in different places and some people don't have nothing better to do you guys with their lives than to cyber stalk other people. OK, or insert themselves into other people's, you know, realities rather than go be productive in their lives and, you know, create some of their own to put their own voice at. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's just the name of the game. But, you know, I typically I'm not interacting with that energy, you know. Um, so I invite you to do the same. I just want to apologize to those of you who are actually here for the right reasons. If you happen to see some of that, um, moderators, those of you who I, who I am assigning, if you see something that is inappropriate, you know what I'm saying? Offensive, you know, towards me, towards you, towards what I do here, feel free to mute it, block them or whatever. Okay. If you don't see it, don't worry about it because I'm not expecting anybody to just stare at the screen because I'm not even staring at the screen <laughs> right so I just wanted to throw that out there now moving past that this may turn into an oracle reading I am gonna pull from the spiritual AF deck just to kind of get an overall message regarding this whole thing with the subconscious and how it affects connections okay especially those of you who may feel like you are dealing with individuals in your life or you were whether it's family friends lovers whatever that maybe there was a past life connection or you feel like it may be uh, what we call karmic or toxic right you feel like there's some kind of influence there and so we're going to address that now for those of you who don't know a little bit more about me Okay, so yes, I am a certified Yusui Reiki master. Yes, I am an intuitive tarot reader. Okay, um, but I have a little bit more diverse background than that. Okay, I didn't just wake up and scratch and fart and Googled, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, let me be a tarot reader. Oh, let me, you know, be, you know, a Reiki master. There was a journey involved with this. Okay. And the experiences that I have outside of the esoteric metaphysical 
um, practices are a little bit more official, okay? I did study business management in college. I also studied psychology in college, as well as I ended up working in these industries um, professionally, okay? I ended up working in hospitals. I ended up working in dental offices. I ended up working in behavioral health clinics. Um, so I've been exposed to a very diverse background, but not to mention, I'm like this lifelong learner. So I've been studying neuroscience and psychology, the brain for a very long time, a very long time. And I continue to do so. So a lot of the information that you guys get from me, you're getting a blend, okay? You're getting channeled information from source. You're getting channeled information, of course, using the metaphysical tools and stuff like that. But you're also getting some education behind it. You're getting some actual practical experience um, that's coming out, out of me that you're hearing, okay? So I just want to say that because, you know, on these things, you know, you don't know who and what and why. You know what I'm saying? Who are they and what they saying? And you know what I'm saying? So people have no idea sometimes the background that you have or even the qualification you have before they start assuming that um, you don't have a right to speak on something. They don't even know what kind of certifications you may have or you know what I'm trying to say? They don't know. They just assume that because you're doing tarot or oracle readings or because you're a Yusui Reiki master that that's the extent of your experience and it's just not not in my case it's just not okay um so enough about me <laughs> now the subconscious you guys we the subconscious governs i want to say the studies show uh 90 percent of our behavior is ruled by our subconscious um, and what does that mean? <laughs> well, it means that whatever is stored beneath the surface is influencing your perception, is influencing your beliefs, is influencing your decisions to some extent, and influences your emotion. So, now I'm going to bridge the connection. Let's say you have a past life connection with someone. And in this carnation, it was meant to resolve an issue. For the awakened individuals in these dynamics, when the awakened individual will start their healing process and come to the awareness of these past life karmic contracts or dynamics, when they become aware that, okay, so there was some kind of a past life karma, some kind of a vendetta, and when I say vendetta, what I mean is something may have happened in another carnation and it, you know, there was a rift, there was a fight, there was a brawl, there was infidelity, there was something that created some type of a vendetta that did not get resolved in that carnation. Everybody died off or something happened before that energy was alchemized, before it was resolved. The souls reincarnate and usually find their way back to each other, some kind of interesting quantum way, right? And, but how it looks in the 3D, how this is playing out is a toxic dynamic because some people aren't even aware of what's going on. Most individuals, especially if they're the unawakened, they're usually, and I'm not meaning this disrespectfully, so just please hear the information, only take what resonates, okay? The unawakened are usually not even self-aware. So they're not even self-aware of themselves, not to mention that there was possibly some past life energy or dynamic that's causing them to think and feel and believe and behave in a certain way and perhaps even sabotaging things, right? So if the unawake, when you come into these dynamics, as the awakened one, you start seeing it, you start doing your inner journeying and healing and alchemizing and addressing past life issues, right? So you're ascending, you're awakening, you're healing. Now, if the other unawakened ones, let's say they are not in cooperation with their higher selves. Let's say they are not in alignment with their divinity. Let's say they are not, they don't even care, shit hell. Let's say they don't even, you know what I'm saying, whatever, right? So what happens is, they're going to be thinking and feeling in certain ways about you and acting out certain things towards you and not even know why. 
Let me give an example. It can be a friend. It could be a lover, you know, that no matter what you do and try, there's always a rift. They always want to fight. They always want to be combative or defensive or you know what I'm saying? In some kind of way, lashing out towards you. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. And to you, as you're awakening, you're like, for no reason. But they're being triggered. And they don't understand that their energy and their subconscious is there of an event that, have, that has happened. And because they're not dealing with themselves, they're not dealing with their inner child. They're not ascending. They're not awakening. Because of all of this, is coming up out in their behavior the things they do the things they think the things they say towards you and vice versa because see this process is, is both sides but what happens is usually there's someone in the dynamic that is awakening to this there's someone in the dynamic that is self-aware and then usually there's others that aren't and those that aren't, we would say they're karmic in nature. And the reason why is because they are operating from that template and they're not doing the inner journey. They're not aligning to their divinity. They're not aware. So they're operating in density. They're operating out of the fear ego energy. They're operating out of that stuff stored in the subconscious. So if there is something unresolved from another lifetime and they're not dealing with it, it's going to continue to sabotage the connection. This is why you guys hear people say things like, you know, when you're awakening and you're ascending and you're transforming, some of the hardest things you're going to end up doing is in the 3D, disconnecting from certain people. Because as long as you're closely, intimately connected, there's going to be this continual merry-go-round because they're not aware. And you can't talk them into awareness. This has to happen for them. It's up to them and them working with their team to assist them with awakening, with healing and dealing and becoming self-aware, basically. So, yeah, it is a very, very, very important factor. And this just came to me in the last couple of days in different ways um, and my guidance from my light team. And it, after just sitting with it and meditating on it for a few days, I was like, wow, it actually makes sense. I mean, they brought in the science since they know that I love science and neurology and things like that. But I get it. And some of us chose to carnate into karmic families. We chose to carnate, you know what I'm saying, for the purpose of lessons and things like that and, and learning things and healing and alchemizing things that may have happened in that um, in the soul's journey with these individuals. But you can only do your side. You can't do their aspect. And this is what frees the awakened one to be able to go and be free. Because if they've addressed it, if they've become aware and of that contract, they're dealing with their subconscious. So this frees them to disconnect in the 3D and to go on, right? But the, the other side, the unawakened ones often don't understand first and foremost. Um, but however, for, for the awakened to stay too to connect it there's no chance of something healthy if people are refusing their own process how can I mean just think about that for yourself use your own logical analytical mind okay how can it be because a healthy dynamics requires two whole healthy individuals that are equally self-aware that are aware of what's influencing something. If they're not, then how can it be? How can it be healthy? So this is why the guidance is become aware if you're not already, okay? If you're the awakened, if you feel like you're on the awakened spectrum of a dynamic, and not in a disrespectful way, it's just referencing that somebody has woken up and are ascending and aligning to their higher self versus those that aren't. That's all that means. Somebody that's doing the inner work. Somebody that's, you know what I'm saying? 
And if you consider yourself to be on that side, you're being asked and guided to realize that you may have some connections in your life with individuals that have a vendetta against you from other lifetimes. And this is why you get a mixed bag of feelings. You get a mixed bag of emotion. And the reason is because it's coming from that subconscious. So it's almost like a Jekyll Hyde effect. Because there may be aspects of them that care for you and love you. But because they're not dealing with that subconscious influence and that inner child stuff, then you're going to get Hyde Jekyll. Jekyll Hyde. And it's going to play out attacks, disrespect, disregard, you know what I'm saying? Lies, cheating, you know what I'm saying? Gossip, all sorts of stuff, toxicity, dysfunction. But they are oblivious to it. And the only reason why they're oblivious is because they haven't did the surrendering and the inner journey and that, that process that we all go, go on. They haven't done it as of yet. And you'll know this based on that dynamic. So, I have some notes here. I'm going to pull your guys' card. Just give me a second, okay? Um, uh, da, 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 da. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was just looking at some of the notes that I got when I was in meditation. Okay. And I know, you know, and, and being in this, you know, Lionsgate portal and, and shifting and, you know, deciding to choose the higher route and higher road and benevolence and peace and positivity. And, you know, what I'm saying just choosing to align and, and go down that Lionsgate path, which is heightened state of awareness and awakening. It's important to be able to identify what we are currently sitting in, what we are currently connecting to, and just sit honestly with it and, and review um, the current energy of dynamics, review the exchanges, review what is actually there versus the excuses that we have provided for it versus what we want it to be, right? It's called acceptance. And if you can, you know, honestly sit and you look at something and you see that you have had an endless toxic cycle with someone or someones that no matter what you did or said, no matter what you tried to heal or resolve, no matter what you may have tried to do to bring wholeness or healing to a dynamic that it was met with resistance and it was met with resistance because when you're dealing with someone that's unawakened, they become triggered. They're probably stuck in their shadow. They're probably stuck in the, the more fear ego based character or template and energy. So when you try and approach such individuals, it's like you're talking Chinese anyway. Okay. Or you get gaslit because it depends on the severity of toxicity that they are they are currently living in and, and how long they have resisted their own um, their own inner journey, how long they have resisted their light team in terms of surrendering to awakening and transforming, how long they stayed in that ego, that resistance to the extent of it, right? So you may get attacked. And many of you have done this. And this is why I'm sharing it. Like, it's, it's not for you to do. I had to learn that the long and slow and hard way. Believe in yourself. We, can't, we, we can only do our journey. And once you have established that individuals aren't in a place to to be able to alchemize something with you in a 3D, it'll serve you well to let it go in a 3D or it can hinder and possibly hurt you because it's not gonna just suddenly become healthy just because you want it to be, okay? 
they're not going to, you know, you trying to appease them for them to become healthy. That's not going to work either. That's just going to enable whatever current energy that they're staying stuck in. Right. All right. So those are the notes. Now, let me get. Right. All right. So those are the notes. Now, let me get. A spiritual AF card for you guys just to um just see what comes out what messages you guys need to know regarding any connections that you're currently in and that there are subconscious vendettas subconscious is timeless influencing the connection okay and maybe what your guidance would be you know if this is resonating with you because again it's general not going to resonate with everybody. It's only going to resonate with those. It's for those, you know what I'm saying? But I, I found it fascinating when this information started coming to me, actually. I found it fascinating. As I just sat with it, I was like, wow. So this is why it should be like it is. <laughs> like, I was like, wow. Like, it was very simplistic, but it just it just kind of hit me like, oh, shit, I forgot, you know, that I had studied certain things and that, you know, in essence, you know, what I'm saying every every human being is governed 90 percent by our subconscious. And for human beings that are not addressing their subconscious, God knows what's influencing. You understand what I'm saying? We're all in you know, governed by the subconscious. And if individuals aren't dealing with it, aren't even aware, aren't even addressing it. And some folks don't even believe it matters. Whether they believe it matters or not, it does. <laughs> um, I can only imagine. And that just kind of blew my mind. Like, whoa. And when you start to, you know, hopefully moving forward, you start to feel some kind of way and some kind of energies and dynamics, you know, of course, you know, pray, meditate, you know what I'm saying? Go within, yada, yada. But just start paying attention, you know, and of course, I want to add a disclaimer because sure as shit, I know somebody is going to say <laughs> some snarly, sarcastic fuck is going to say Sometimes people are just, you know, having a bad day or having a bad year or um, having a hard time in life and is irritated with life. And that's why I'm adding this disclaimer. Absolutely. That's why it's up to us, those of us who feel like we are awakening or awakened and doing this journey. It's up to us to do our due diligence and go within on our side so that we can discern and determine intuitively what's what. Once you have identified and see, and that's what I was speaking into the whole time. Once it has been identified. That the ones that are on the awakened side have identified what what's happening. Once that's been determined from there, right? Like, oh, I get it. Oh, okay. They're unaware. There's some, you know, we had a past life together, whether they believe in that or not. And something happened in a past life. We had a vendetta. They had a vendetta. Some, some shit went down. You know what I'm saying? Everybody died and then, you know what I'm saying? We reincarnated and that shit is floating all up around in the subconscious and it's causing them, you know what I'm saying, to act out in certain ways. And I can't talk them out of it. The only thing I can do is wish them well. You know what I'm saying? Send them love and light, you know, and go on about my life, but put up a healthy boundary and disconnect. You know what I'm saying? understanding that this does not have any potential for anything healthy it doesn't have any potential because of because it takes two it takes all parties involved in any kind of relationship you guys it takes everybody it can't be it can't be the awakened one is carrying the weight carrying the weight while the others remain unawakened and keep acting out right it's not going to work because they're just going to keep the toxic cycle going. 
right? All right. And you do this in love and you do this as you feel guided. You know, it's not implied that, you know, that's why we have to really start going within and, and using some wisdom and balance. You know, your internal guidance system and your team is going to be assisting you with that if you're open to it. To determine, okay, is this, these are individuals I need to like straight up cut off. You know what I'm saying? Or, or is these situations where I just need a stronger, healthier boundary because of the toxicity, right? So you have to, you know, be able to determine that for yourself and then make the call. Because sometimes if there's a vendetta, just think about it in practical terms. Think about like high school, y'all. I'm going to equate it to high school. High school and junior high, right? And I'm doing this because typically those that are in a low frequency or stuck in the shadow, they're really childlike in a not good way. And what I mean by that is that's that survival energy, the more toxic way of handling things. And in high school, if you think about it, like the mean girls and the, you know what I'm saying, the jocks versus the geeks and the, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that, right? If somebody's got vendettas, think about this. If individuals have vendettas against you, right, usually there was no resolve for that unless all parties involved equally was self-aware and self-reflective and wanted to truly make it different. But usually, no. They usually try to sabotage one another. Think about high school. Think about the movie Carrie. Think about every rom-com and, and Mean Girls story and, and, you know, all these dynamics. These individuals with vendettas seek to bring hurt, harm, devastation in some way to those other individuals that they have a vendetta against, whether it is warranted or not. And to stay closely connected is like, you will be looked at as like straight crazy because you know they're trying to hurt you in some way. You know they're trying to sabotage you in some way. You know they're trying to take advantage of you in some way. You know that they don't like you. You, you know what I'm saying? You know they have something against you. Usually you'll somebody's got that energy rolling up in the subconscious towards you and they're not aware of it and they're not dealing with it or even denying it like I said some are have been resistant more on the narcissistic spectrum right just think about that y'all high school Carrie like all these old school movies and stuff like that like these individuals are stuck in a toxic cycle, stuck with a toxic mindset, stuck in this kind of, you know, um, false sense of supremacy. Most of these individuals were truly hurting inside. Most of them, some of them were just dumb and they were jealous of the geeks. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, so they hid behind their beauty, their vanity, their things, their popularity. You know what I'm saying? Some of them were jealous of the geeks because the geeks knew how to stand alone all kind of shit you know geeks because the geeks knew how to stand alone all kind of shit you know just dumb shit but because of it you know what i'm saying like they did you know carrie that strange girl you know in that old school movie carrie carrie wasn't bothering nobody that's high school though isn't it think about it she may have been strange she may have been different whatever but look she wasn't bothering nobody though she was minding her business right and then individuals you know just have had a vendetta this salt to make her life hard make her life miserable tease her ridicule her and they didn't want to see her happy or smile or win and they wanted to ruin that for her so it is the same with people you guys i don't care if they're 55 65 i don't care if they got matches on a heel if they got this energy inside of them and they're subconscious towards you it's the same thing they may cover it it may be passive aggressive they may deny it but essentially it's the same thing 
Yes. Yes. Some are competitive in an unhealthy way because they're not dealing with their inner child. They're not dealing with that subconscious. So they can't, you know, they got to one up you all the time. And that song that came to mind to me the other day when these messages started coming from my team, I forget how it goes. It's an old school some, song that goes something like, uh, is it a song or is it just like a little, um, a little chant? Well, anyway, it goes, anything you can do, I can do better. I can do everything better than you, right? Many of them are in that, that, that dense energy that feels the need that makes them feel stronger. It makes them feel powerful. It makes them feel important. It makes them feel valid. Erroneously, it's an illusion. But that's why they're in that energy to where they have to constantly one up you in every conversation and everything that ever goes on. You can never say nothing about something that you are doing or accomplishing without them immediately turning it to themselves right <laughs> and many of you all if you're on that awakened aspect or side of it you're singing a whole nother kind of you know little song a little tune you know you're like well anything you can do I ain't worried about doing better <laughs> I ain't trying to do better because I'm okay with being me and doing me. I don't need to be you because I'm me. I don't need to do what you do better because I do me better than you. <laughs> I do me better than you. And that's the way it's meant to be. I do me better than you. I don't need to. It's not my energy. It's not my focus. Right? So these are telltale signs of people that are, first of all, not dealing with their inner child, not awakening, not healing. And then in some cases, depending on how toxic it gets, again, having some kind of a vendetta against you and not really dealing with it. It don't even have to necessarily be a past life. It can be just something from the past that they are not addressing. The past in this carnation that they are, they hid it, they, they suppressed it, they deny it. You know what I'm saying? Whatever methods they've used to say, oh, no, I don't have a problem with them. I don't have a problem with them. No, no, you know, I'm, yeah, yeah, but your attitude, your behavior, your conduct says differently. Or I'm not jealous. I'm not, well, your conduct and your behavior says differently. You see what I'm trying to say? Again, once you guys have become aware, you know, your guidance is pay attention and make whatever necessary adjustments that your team is starting to give you. Okay. Mm. One already flew out. Wow. And this is a good thing. Look at this as a positive, even for them, believe it or not. Okay. And I know it's like, huh? But yeah. Because who knows what happens on their journey sometime down the road. It's not for us to even worry about that or think about that, right? But we don't help. We be erroneously thinking that we're helping or that we're operating in love if we stay closely connected. Like, oh, maybe this is how I'm going to help. Has it thus far? If you need a more severe example of that, think about a dynamic with a drug addict and their enabling family members, right? That in the name of love, oftentimes there are, you know, caretakers, family members, even lovers and friends that feel like if they just stay with that person to show them that they're not going anywhere, if they you know, appease, you know, try to make these individuals comfortable as possible and happy as possible, right? That this is going to 
fix the issue, but the issue is that beyond that, you're not fixing it. You're not getting it. You're not getting to it. You're just coddling them to be comfortable where they're at. You're coddling them to not have to become self-aware. You're coddling them to not have to do any type of growth or evolution on their own. To not come to a healthy place and state of mind and being. We all have to hit our versions of rock bottom sometimes. So for the awakened individuals that have this tendency to, you know what I'm saying, be manipulated or overgive, overextend, you know, trying to prove something, trying to prove I'm I'm going to be there. I'm not going to be like everybody else. I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to be there to ride or die thick and thin. All those cutesy little sayings sounds great, but that can become very toxic. And sounds great, but that can become very toxic. And then we wonder why we see the circle and the cycle continue. Because the issues aren't being addressed energetically. And then we wonder why we see the circle and the cycle continue. Because the issues aren't being addressed energetically. They're not being dealt with. All parties involved aren't aware, just like with the drug addict. You can appease them all they all you want. Okay? You can give them all the shit you know they want, trying to make them comfortable, but I can bet my bottom dollar they're going to turn right back to the same behaviors. You're not going to be able to keep up. Their desires are un insatiable because they have a you can't keep up with that and that then they're going to start lashing out at you and then that you're going to start neglecting your own self and that's not healthy and that's not love you can't keep up with that and that then they're going to start lashing out at you and then that you're going to start neglecting your own self and that's not healthy and that's not love Only fools or suckers think they can do it all on their own. Ask for help. Then take the help. Let other people be a part of your success. What happened to my screen? Oh, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Don't be stingy about letting people share in whatever kick-assery <laughs> that you create. Every real baller has a crew. Also, you don't know everything, right? That's just a fact. Boom. Okay. Give me a second. So what I'm picking up is this. For those of you who are on the side of the group of those who are awakened or awakening, you already have realized this statement. And you have gone within and you have sought the necessary um, qualified help. Right? You have learned how to, you know, discern the difference know who to ask help from because not all help is good help right you've discerned that and you've realized that okay i need to go within and i need to seek some guidance you know source whatever and sometimes it's all spiritual and energetic you know if you're in a situation where there's no 3d people and other times it's about finding that soul tribe and for those of you who are on that awakened side you realize that right but see, those that are on the other side, it's two ways it plays out for them. We have those that play the victim and then those that are just too arrogant and in false bravado, right? They play the victim in terms of they claim they're asking for help from everybody or whatever, but they sabotage their help. They abuse their help. They, um, because of that subconscious stuff that we're talking about. So it's like they bite the hand of the, the they bite the hand of the individual they sought. Because nobody's gonna stay helping if you're toxic, right? And abusive and not self-aware or not you know grateful or whatever. 
So you got those that are unawakened that play that ticket and people really buy into it for a very long time. And then you got the other ones that they can't, you know, see no flaw in themselves <laughs> on the other spectrum. They don't see no flaw in themselves. They, they got it together. They have it all figured out. There's nothing wrong with them. It's everybody else. <laughs> and so because of that, they have resisted their own transformation. They've resisted their own awakening. They've resisted. They chose to focus on the 3D and stay stuck in the shadow aspects, the fear and ego based aspects. Because they were too proud to ask for any higher vibrational qualified help. Not yes men and yes women. Because we all know how to gather a bunch of yes MFs. You know what I'm saying? People who want to be connected to us or benefit from us in some way. They, they not fencing to say shit. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be yes people. And probably are not even qualified anyway. So that's why I specified and said qualified help. Right? Some are too proud and too arrogant, you know what I'm saying, to even think they need it, right? And this is confirming what I said. You are not required to set yourself on fire to keep other people warm. You're not required to set yourself on fire to keep other people feeling satisfied because they feed from your energy or your presence or from continuing that cycle, you know, toxic cycle. You know how you can tell if someone is taking advantage of you? You feel like shit <laughs> after giving to them. Because they're in a very low energy, I'm telling you. They're, they are not in a healthy place and space. And so, when though giving is supposed to feel some kind of way, when you give to these kinds of people, like she says here, you feel like shit. That shit isn't healthy for anyone. Put the matches down and back away. They can get warm on their own. Now, go do some something kind for yourself to the world that's better service to the world by doing so hear what she is saying y'all and i was she's saying what i've been saying to y'all in, in a different way like you're not doing you're not helping by continuing that kind of dynamic with people you're not helping them you're not helping yourself you're not helping the world we all have a path to take and some people, you know what I'm saying, they got to go their paths to start learning some lessons and it may be hard for them, you know, that's that's their journey. Side and you're ascending and doing your stuff on your journey, you know, it's like saying to you, "Um, no. That's not why you're here." Yeah. The subconscious has major effects on relationships, on connections. I invite y'all to meditate, whatever you do, go within, get still, get silent, get in nature, undistracted, some kind of way. And with that intention and ask the question, self-view, self-evaluate, look at your current connections. And not the shallow, surface, superficial aspects, okay? Look at it just as a review, without a judgment, but just look at it so you can, so you can assess it purely for what it is, uh, not the potential, not, you know, because you know how we do it, the potential, one day they was nice to me, you know what I'm saying? We, we be all over the place with that, the potential, they have potential. Well, everything has potential, but it's called free will. It's called a journey. And not everybody is surrendering or aligning to, you know what I'm saying, the higher frequency, the benevolence, the higher selves. Not everybody is actively or currently taking that stance. And you can't force that. Okay. Guidance, right? So 
So ask yourself. I'm going to um, pull and see what kind of card we get out for you guys from here and then the Oracle of E to see if you, you know, Source, Gaia, the collective light team here that's resonating with this with some little quickie rapid fire messages concerning this, right? All right, light team, what do we have? For the collective that resonates with the messages you all gave me regarding vendettas, the subconscious, past life relationships, how the subconscious influences relationships, and the importance of releasing connections, um, as you all gave me regarding vendettas, the subconscious, past life relationships, how the subconscious influences relationships, and the importance of releasing connections um, of those that are toxic or unawake importance of releasing connections um, of those that are toxic or unawakened that has some type of vendettas against us or something going on in that subconscious understanding for awareness here dynamic but it's because the individuals aren't addressing their addiction their addiction to hating you their addiction to wanting to always war and fight with you they're not dealing with that subconscious is there anything else from this deck like team look at this i can't make it up except what is dying Look at this. I, and that's a part of it. That's what I started this whole self-aware to see how it's influencing their behaviors towards you. Even if it's jealousy or envy, you know what I'm saying? The refusal to do that work and go within, then you can't really see it. And, but yet it's still going to come out in your conduct. Except that this those connections may never be what you want them to be in the 3d maybe the awakened individual's addictions is this loyalty this tendency to want to hold on except okay some dynamics in the 3d will never be what you wanted them to be at hope them to be because of the other individuals involved unawakened state and refusal to duty will never be what you wanted them to be at hope them to be because of the other individuals involved unawakened state and refusal to do their transformative work and to see how there there's things in their subconscious that is directly affecting their connection with you and i'll even dare say grieve <sighs> grieve what you perceive as your losses. I'm going to say it that way. Because you really don't lose nothing. Grieve what you perceive as a loss as you are letting go of toxicity, as you're letting go of toxic connections, or how about even an addiction to a, a view, an addiction, you know what I'm saying, grieve releasing this false hope in a 3d dynamic or an illusionary story an illusionary you know thing that you wanted to believe that something had the capability of being but it didn't it's okay to grieve that okay You've already had your wake up calls, you know, seeing people, you know, playing out these cycles with people over and over again. But now these individuals are probably being provoked into wake up calls too. their version of that, because as they continue to stay in that same vein, you know, they're going to keep the same kinds of cycles going on, too. So eventually they're going through all these wake up calls that, you know, shit going to keep crumbling, shit going to keep. You know what I'm saying? Having false starts. There's going to always be an issue. There's going to always be this and that and this and that because eventually they're going to catch a clue. All right? But that's not for you to worry about. But there are wake-up calls going on. 
is going to always be an issue. There's going to always be this and that and this and that because eventually they're going to catch a clue. All right. But that's not for you to worry about. But there are wake up calls going on with individuals that in their subconscious, they got some kind of issue towards you and it has played out in some. That's going to be a lot of their wake up calls. Okay. And then at the bottom of the deck, you guys continue to forgive and forget and move on. I know it's easier said than done. Very cliche statement. So just bear with yourself. Be patient with yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Ask your guides and your light team whatever you need to do. Whatever resonates with you with this process. Okay? In terms of anything you may feel like you have, you know, from the way people have treated you or whatever that has caused you to have to disconnect. That has caused you to have to, you know what I'm saying, um, put up that boundary or walk away, right? Forgiving, forgetting your, you know, forgiving yourself, not forgetting yourself, but forgiving yourself as well. You know, we all make mistakes or, you know, you may feel you stayed in something way too long or why did you tolerate this and that? It's like, you know what? At least you have the capacity to love and to care. At least you tried. Okay. Forgive yourself. Right. And ask for help with, you know, that forgetting because you're not going to technically forget, but it's about not allowing it to influence your now, not allowing it to be a factor in your moving forward in life. Right. Because now you're just going to take the wisdom with you. You're going to start paying attention. You know what I'm saying? You're going to look at cycles and patterns. You know what I'm saying? Follow that internal guidance system because we have it for a reason. Right? All right. Let's wrap this up, light team. Black light men. Let's bring it to help my beautiful collective here. I know it never initially feels, you know, depending on where you at, where you're at with this process, some of you are already there. Some of you are like, I'm good. I'm cool. Okay. This is just confirming shit. <laughs> you know? Others of you may still be in that initial phase. And that's the phase that, you know, feels a little bit painful. Others of you may still be in that initial phase. And that's the phase that, you know, feels a little bit painful, a little bit uncomfortable. And sometimes there's resistance. That's all we got that except what's dying. Right? And you can steal. Now here's, here's the irony, the trippy part. As you're awakening, you know, you raise your frequency and you still can feel love for these individuals. Believe it or not. Once you get through that initial phase, the initial phase, you got to process and fill your feels and, you know, validate your experience or whatever. Right. But at, at some point when you are able to kind of detach and neutralize from the experience, you, you know, you can like feel love and send love and light. Not that you want to be with them, not that you want to be their BFF, not that you want to be. You, you know, you can like feel love and send love and light. Not that you want to be with them. Not that you want to be their BFF. Not that you want to be, you know, closely tied. But you can actually, you know, feel, uh, is love the right word? You, uh, well, yeah, in a way. I mean, the compassion, because in, essentially you're going to learn as you continue to awaken that, you know, it's their con condition, it's their state of mind, it's their state of being, it's their state of awareness, it's their pain, it's their inner child. They may be acting all kinds of ways and fraud and, you know what I'm saying, faking and fraud and, and you know, before the world or whatever. Look at this, hasta la vista. <laughs> Some of y'all still got to say that energetically, mentally, technically, physically, right? Live wire. Hmm. Because y'all online shit. You know what I'm saying? Y'all waking up and shit. Live wired. And these other individuals, they're not there yet. And that's okay. You know, it's not for us to get caught up in that whole, you know what I'm saying? It's okay. 
you know it's their free will choice you know what i'm saying some of the things that i'm learning is that we carnate so many times you guys and we come in you know precarnation for different reasons and some people maybe this carnation maybe they didn't sign up to wake up this time right maybe they signed up to just play a role and stick into the karmic template and belief systems and a certain religion and or whatever and that's what they agreed to to have an experience you know based in that and that's equally okay but if your carnation this um go around was for the purpose of awakening ascending healing transforming evolving letting go of limited shits then you gotta go that journey for yourself you know what i'm saying and realize that the other individuals also have a free will and to try to either make them come on your journey or for you to reduce yourself to theirs is an injustice We're all divine beings and it's free will. We have to want things for ourselves. We have to decide things and cooperate with our team and yada yada. Because some did carnate to wake up, but they're in resistance. Right? Not your call. It's not your judgment to make. They have to live that out. Right? And look, we've got the wrecking ball. This is the tower. This is the wake up call. Right? You've all have experienced your dark nights of the soul, but now those that are still unawakened and that, you know, have these issues towards you and these vendettas, they're going to experience so many wrecking balls. They're going to wish they woke up. I, I mean, I'm saying that in a silly and funny way, but it's like, because, you know, because that's the law of cause and effect. Nobody can do nothing about that. <laughs> Because some people, yeah. Time out. Disconnect. Because you all are transforming to your superhero status. Right? <laughs> I'm serious. When you're awakening, you're awakening, you know, superhero shit. All right, let's do it. <laughs> but send them all love and light and just wish them well that they find their way you know that they find what's ailing their soul that they align to their higher self you know that that inner child gets healed resolved you know what i'm saying just put that as your intention and then just keep moving forward right when you're ready you know when you're in that initial pain you're not ready to say that right and that's okay too. Bring it. I told you guys y'all was a superhero. It came out. Bring it. And it's time to fly, baby. We got card number 11. Boom. 44 breaking down. Well, don't break down, but if you add them together, because I think it's a master number. But if you add it together, it's an eight. Lion's Gate, baby. Lion's Gate, it's time to fly. And you can't fly with excess baggage, though. You can't fly and be that superhero with your cape and shiznit. Right? <laughs> when you're refusing to accept what is dying, refusing to say no to the things your higher guidance is telling you to say no to, refusing to put up healthy boundaries or disconnect from individuals that your higher guidance is telling you you need to you can't because they're stuck in density they're stuck and if they have a vendetta like i said if there's a vendetta energy i don't care if it's a smile on their face i don't care if they offering you some people do flatter and offer gifts with the intention to conquer It's called get them to take their defense down. It's called convince them that they're that, you know, we're for them and we're really not. Right. 
So you have to use your own intuition and discern and follow that no matter what kind of smile is plastered on their face. Okay? Or no matter what kind of compliment or whatever, you got to discern the energy, not the appearance. Because y'all, it's time for y'all, whoever's resonating with this, y'all's got some flying to do. Okay? <laughs> Shit. Y'all got some flying to do up around here. You don't have time to deal with people who don't want to deal with themselves. And becoming self-aware and how they treat people. I mean, if you want to reduce shit to like the most simplest terms and not so esoteric or metaphysical, you know what I'm saying? If you want to reduce it to the most simplistic terms is that you don't have time for individuals that are not emotionally and mentally mature enough, self-aware enough to realize the nature of their own decisions and actions and behaviors towards others and how they affect people. If you want to reduce it to that simplicity. Right? Anything else from here, Light Team? What time we got? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Boom. Ooh, why did that fall out? <laughs> I'm getting several messages with this. Okay. See, so for many of you, what's in the making is this jackpot, whatever that means for you, right? Woo, woo, jackpot, time to celebrate. But the message I'm getting is that as it fell, as it fell, as it came out, is what is could potentially happen if we, those of us who are saying or resonating with the side of saying we're awakening, we're ascending, we're self-aware, we're healing. If we don't follow, if you don't follow that resonance and this higher guidance, this is what will happen. No jackpot, no celebration. And it's not because of a punishment it's energy. Everything is energy. It's energy. Everything is energy. Sorry about that little delay there, you guys. Sorry about that. It's energy. Everything is energy, you guys. So, by your free will staying attached to something that is toxic in nature, you're staying attached to what comes with that toxicity that has the capacity to influence your jackpot, your woot woot, your celebration. Okay, especially individuals with a vendetta. Staying closely connected will almost interrupt and interfere and cause that to go in reverse, at least for that time. Not to say you won't ever recover, but who's got time to be playing? You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody trying to do that no more. Behind no bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I'm, <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that. Nobody don't got no time for that no more. All right, light team, is there anything else from here or no? All righty, then is that all for my, my lovelies or do we have anything else here? I don't know why I was guided over here. So maybe it's for somebody. Let's see. All right. Who is this for light team? Whoever this is for, because this may not be for the whole collective. It may be for one or two people. So what is the message here from the Kipper? What's the message for whoever this is for? Because I was guided there for a reason. Because see, look, okay. Yep. Death and transformation. Oh, my God. So this, okay. 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 Card number 11 again. This is why. I just said that, didn't I? Sudden wealth. Except what's dying. Coffin. Sutton well. Whoa.
Wow. And wealth being whatever that means for you. Look at all this change. You're changing. Some of you are moving or you've already moved or you're about to move or, you know what I'm saying? Or it's more symbolic that you're just transforming. You're evolving and you're not trying to be stopped. And here's the judgment card. To me, I look at this as the judgment. What's the message for whoever it's for, Light Team? And why I was guided here? Black Lightning. Let's do it. What's the message? Family room at the bottom. Boom. Community. Boom. Okay. Boom. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is going along with the message. See, it's up to you all to rightly discern and go within and understand whatever's going on in your family dynamic and whatever that means for you, okay? Whatever it means, your home life, your family dynamic, your community, your close circle of people because these connections influences your life. It influences this jackpot and this woot woot. And if these individuals are karmic towards you, if these individuals have a vendetta that you have been able to assess and make that determination and your guidance is giving you to make the call, you need to understand that this is impacting your success. Man, see, sometimes other people are aware of it too. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you got to go with your guidance. Sometimes they're aware, they're in thinking mode, okay? They're aware, and I'm not talking about their subconscious stuff. You know what I'm saying? They're aware. That there's judgment, a judgment call being made or that justice is coming in for you. Whether it's a wealthy man or just through the masculine energy, you're that, that you're about to become wealthy in some way. They can see it. They see some of you working hard and diligent, right? And when people are in that density energy... Even if they still have a vendetta against you, like I just said, and they will appear whatever way they need to appear in the 3D. But because they're refusing to deal with that real shit, you know what I'm saying? They're, whether it be to try to sabotage you, whether it be to try to hitchhike off of you to get a piece of it or whatever. But no pure intent. No no loving higher vibrational intent because the core and the subconscious if there's still jealousy and envy and competitiveness and entitlement and some kind of a, a vendetta then it ain't gonna be high vibrational it could be to try to take control to try to take something whatever not And because, see, you guys have justice on your side, okay? If you align and stay connected, you know what I'm saying, to your higher self and follow that guidance, you're being held in high honor. This is also justice to me. The higher realm stepping in for many of you to bring this jackpot, okay? Because things were stolen from you for a long time by staying connected to toxicity karmic individuals right was stolen some of y'all you know what i'm saying it was straight up marriages partnerships um 
commitments with false people. We got these right next to each other. Some of y'all is straight sleeping with the enemy. With these like this, this is a strong message. Some of you, you know what I'm saying, you're going to have to accept, you know, if you think you're on a twin flame journey or whatever your resonance is, if these individuals, these people you feel like or perceive are your twins, you know, if they're unawakened and choosing to stay karmic, chances are they, you know, they got robbed <laughs> by marrying a karmic. Density, toxic energy, past life, malevolent, vendetta energy, right? Fear, ego, 3D base. So some of y'all are going to have to accept that for some of you. That's a, a message for a few of you. Accept that, you know, some people you think is supposed to be who you're going to be with. You got to accept that that person has chosen to stay toxic. They have chosen to stay karmic. They have chosen to stay unawakened. And as a result, they have they have been their destiny or their higher vibrational destiny was stolen in a sense it was stolen in a sense through a connection that they chose from a false person okay so some of you are being asked god accept that now because you're held in high honor you're going to get your just due here's justice right if you continue to align and follow this guidance, cut off stuff that's got some weird subconscious vindictive, addictive energy. People who act like they like you, but you can totally feel they don't. And their behavior shows that they don't because of what's ruminating around in that subconscious. Right? For whatever the reason. Because again, you guys, it is time time it's time lion's gate it's time it's time to fly you got that superhero status jackpot time for celebration time to bring in the goods okay All right, this concludes the discussion on the subconscious and how it affects connections. Um, people that have um, vindictive energy in their subconscious towards you, where there was a past life or a past connection relationship, how that affects you and how it affects the connection and why it is so important for you to follow your guidance and disconnect from individuals that are not aware of it and as a result, they're acting out in certain ways towards you. It's for love. It's for high vibration. It's for your own health and wealth and success. It's for your jackpot. To not let nothing stop that. Okay? We all have a free will, so people are choosing to be and do and feel and believe as they wish. You too are being guided to follow your higher guidance system and make the call. Okay, to ensure your jackpot. I send you guys love and light and namaste.